Hi, my name is Francisco and welcome to another video of the marketing research series and this time I want to talk to you about causal research designs. So the first thing to address is what are the characteristics of, uh, of causal studies. Uh, in causal studies, the main purpose, the main goal of it is trying to look for cause and effect relationships. So how one variable can affect another variable. And, um, and in marketing, this is extremely important because during product development and product testing, essentially what you're mostly doing are causal uh, studies. Designs of websites to do, uh, test different variations of a product, to test a new promotional campaign. For example, let's assume that a company is launching up a new advertising campaign and there are three more or less different approaches. One that you're using a little bit more sex, another one a little bit more humor, one a little bit more emotion, and you're not sure exactly which one would have greater appeal. And then you would test that. You would show these to, uh, to potential consumers and then you would measure their attitude towards the brand or their willingness to purchase the product or uh, their buying intention or their effective response towards the... So in causal studies, what you're looking at is one variable and, and this variable we call an independent variable, which is the variable that we manipulate. So the independent variable is the one that we're manipulating. And we want to see how that affects another variable. And uh, the other variable is the one that we measure and we call it a dependent variable. So for example, imagine that, um, imagine that you have a concert and you can have very many different pricing schemes. And how do these different pricing schemes affect the willingness of consumers to purchase the tickets for that concert? So you're trying to see how the different pricing strategies or the pricing schemes that you have for, for your uh, music festival or your concert. If I change the pricing scheme that you can buy individual tickets or bundle of tickets or different early bird pricing and uh, later pricing more expensive, how does that affect their willingness to, uh, to purchase those tickets? So for example, if you're trying out a different supplier uh, of a hamburger, right? A different tomato sauce, and you're trying to see how that tomato sauce, the, those different tomato sauces affect the perception of taste of that hamburger, the taste is the dependent variable. So you're trying to know, for example, if you're McDonald's or Burger King or Wendy's, you're trying to say, well, if I change these tomato sauces, how does it impact taste? So as you see, in all of these situations, you're looking for a cause and effect relationship. How one variable, which is the one that you manipulate, we also call it the predictor variable or the independent variable, how that impacts another one, which is the effect which we call it the dependent variable and is the one that we measure. Now the main methods used in, uh, in um, causal studies are laboratory experiments and also field experiments. And the main difference between these two refers to the level of control that the researcher or the marketer um, has over whatever is being tested. So a great example is imagine McDonald's for example, that McDonald's wants to have a new sandwich for their store. Uh, usually what they do is they start with a laboratory experiment where they have a greater control of the setting, for example. So they will produce variations of the sandwich with more sauce, with less sauce, with different types of bread. And they will test those in an absolutely controlled environment where you're going to have participants trying out the burger and rating in different schemes without any participation, without any distraction from others, and a completely controlled environment so they can only focus on the burger which is actually being tested. And usually when those scores are high, uh, the follow up what, the, uh, what McDonald's for example would do is they would follow that up with a field experiment where they would only get a few branches, not all McDonald's uh, in the US or in Germany or in Brazil, they would only select a few ones and then only in those few ones they would sell these burgers normally. So they would be normally posted there on the menu and then the consumer could go and choose that burger and after trying they would go and, and approach the customer that tried that, that bought that burger and uh, measure and ask them what they thought of those burgers. Now, when they were choosing the burger, when they were trying, that's not a controlled environment. They could be with friends, they could be with others, and those are usually field experiments. And then afterwards, they would go on and test. Um, and after that, they would go on and measure what they thought of those burgers. So the main difference really in relation to laboratory experiments and field experiments refers to the amount of control. In a cause and effect relationship, you have a number of, of variables that can influence the cause and effect. And usually in, in experiments, they should be controlled for. And those are called extraneous variables. 
So in the example of burgers, imagine that when, uh, you have, when you're trying out the burger that you have people around them, you know, being uh, loud and telling them, oh, this is a terrible burger or, or this is a great burger. Of course, that the distractions and the opinions of others will influence how they feel about the particular burger. So all of these should be controlled for. And the more that they are controlled, the more you can say that that um, experiment that, that you're conducting has an internal validity. In other words, the extent to which you can say that the effect is actually caused by the cause. You have too many extraneous variables. You cannot really say that the effect is caused by the cause because there's so many things that can influence the cause and effect relationship. So usually in laboratory experiments, um, they have a high internal validity and they have a higher internal validity uh, when compared to field experiments because simply you're controlling more for these extraneous variables. If you're developing a product, if you're developing a communication campaign, if you're thinking of different pricing schemes for your, for your company, if you're thinking of different suppliers for your products or for your service, make sure you test them. Um, sometimes it doesn't take too long to set up a quick experiment to, trust, to test what is the, the most suitable approach for your communication, for your price, for your product, and it can definitely reduce risks while you're making these decisions. So on a nutshell, that's what a causal research design would be. All the absolute best, take care, and bye-bye.